That's not a typo. Yeah, that's right. That's not a typo. Elon Musk is going to be sending two cargo vessels to the surface of Mars this year. And to think that I doubted him. Maybe he's going to pilot it using these advanced Tesla bots also due in mid-2022. And that's not just two launches, bear in mind, because each one of those rockets that goes to Mars will require about six launches just to tank it up. Send the spaceship up to orbit. You retank it, or refill it, until it has full tanks. So we'll be looking at about 20 Starship launches this year to make this Mars rendezvous. And of course, in another two years, there'll be a, a load of people going to Mars. Uh, so then in 2024, uh, we want to try to fly four ships, uh, two of which would be crewed and two of which, two, two cargo and, and two, two crew. And it's not going to be in some cramped, difficult situation because Elon Musk is in charge of this. I swear it's not that hard. <laughs> it's... it's going to be in the lap of luxury with entertainment systems, lecture theatres and everything. I mean, in order to make it appealing, um, and, and increase that portion of the Venn diagram where people who actually want to go. Um, it's got to be really fun and exciting, um, and it, it can't feel cramped or, um, or boring. So uh, the, the, crew, the crew compartment or the occupant compartment is set up so that you can do zero-G games, you can float around, uh, there'll be like movies, uh, lecture halls, um, you know, cabins, um, a restaurant. It'll be like really fun. To go. Excellent. I mean, that's a functioning sales pitch to turn space travel for something as difficult, hard, will probably kill you into basically a, a cruise on a luxury liner where there will be restaurants and zero G games. Not quite sure who's going to be manning the restaurants or anything, but whatever. We'll, we'll worry about that when we actually build one because no one would give you hundreds of thousands of dollars. But the architecture allows for a cost per ticket. Um, of less than two hundred thousand dollars, maybe as less, maybe as little as a hundred thousand dollars, to live in at cramped, dangerous conditions for the rest of their lives. I mean, hell, what? What if you were to tell them that it was going to be really hard work and they might die? And this would simply be the dumbest business proposition ever. It would be like us selling people coffin-sized boxes for $200,000 so they can live in them for their whole lives on the basis that it will reduce the carbon footprint of the planet. I mean, that's a, that's a virtuous goal, right? Reducing the carbon footprint of the planet. Um, and like I said, I'm an optimist, but I think we've got to protect the downside here and, and, and try to build that city on Mars as soon as possible and secure the future of life. Now, give me your $200,000 and go sit in this box. I mean, can we just get a quick hands up from the audience as to who thinks that this would be a viable business model for, say, colonizing another planet? Um, and it can't feel cramped or um, boring. So it can't feel cramped or... Get ready for a surprise! The sales pitch for, for, for going to Mars is that um, it's going to be a cramped <laughs> occupant compartment is set up so that you can do zero G games, you can float around, uh, there'll be like movies, uh, lecture halls, dangerous, difficult, uh, very hard work. Um, and like I said, I'm an optimist. Uh, you might die. Um, and um, that's the sales pitch. Um, your cabins, um, a restaurant, It'll be, like, really fun. Smithies, I'm beginning to think that Homer Simpson was not the brilliant tactician I thought he was. So far from being some sort of escape hatch, it will be extremely difficult and dangerous and, and tough. Yeah, it would be like asking people to spend the rest of their lives in the hardest prison that you can imagine. Think about someplace truly diabolical. Triple Max Prison, and no daylights. And expected them to pay you $200,000 for the privilege. <laughs> that was your whole plan. Mm. Or scientific. Mm. I, I just got overexcited. Bear in mind, of course, that if there aren't hundreds of thousands of people willing to do this, 
then Elon Musk's entire plan for colonizing Mars is gone as well. There's no one who's going to go. I don't know about this new crew of yours. They seem a bit skittish. Probably shouldn't tell them what happened in the last crew. But I mean tracking the vaporware promises of getting to Mars quickly and cheaply for at least 10 years. I will tell you how we will go to Mars. And I will, I will tell you where we are in the timeline of this mission. <laughs> Elon Musk. This one had Nobel Prize winners involved with it. This is really something that can be achieved. I think this might become a most spectacular media event ever watched by everyone on the globe. They had a plan. This is the plan. In 2016, a communication satellite and a supply mission. 2018, a large planetary rover will be sent to Mars. In 2020, living units, life support units, a rover and more supplies will be sent to Mars. The rovers will prepare the settlement for human arrival. The crew will depart in September 2022. April 2023, the humans will land on Mars. The next giant leap for mankind. I mean, forget all the rocket crap. Even if I were to give Elon Musk a magic wand that would instantly transport all of these people to Mars, never mind the $200,000 per person crap, for free, he still couldn't build them a stable habitat. If you can't build someone a self-sufficient habitat here on Earth, what chance do you have of doing it on Mars? The nearest thing that was ever tried was Biosphere 2, and it turns out to be nightmarishly complex. And that's before you consider the prospect of someone going crazy and smashing a window and killing everyone. Oh, but sure, all these people have fired themselves off into space to live the rest of their lives in cramped, hard-working, stressful conditions. They're all going to be perfectly mentally well-balanced somehow. The simple reality is if you really wanted to safeguard life on Earth from some cataclysmic disaster as soon as possible and secure the future of life. You'd actually be much better off just digging holes a kilometer or so into the ground than going to Mars. It'll be cheaper, safer, better for protecting life and so on. I must confess you have an astonishingly good idea there, Doctor. Plus, the people who actually go and live in those holes would have the option of coming out and having a picnic or something. You know, in the unlikely event that the Earth isn't actually destroyed. Four and a half billion years. It's been a while. This is the first time it's been possible. We need to seize the opportunity and do it as quickly as possible. In order to breed more prodigiously than we do, thus knocking us out through superior numbers when we emerge. Mr. President, we must not allow a mine shaft gun. There is too much solar radiation and too much radiation from cosmic rays. So we really have to go underground. Not that different to a cave that you would have here on Earth. Or we may choose to live underground in caves or in lava tubes, of which there are plenty. This is hardly the romance of exploring strange new places. It's sitting in a cave for the rest of your life. If you wanted to be the first person to spend the rest of your life in a lava tube, you don't have to go to Mars to do this. There are plenty of uninhabited and unexplored lava tubes here on Earth. And you don't have to pay Elon Musk $200,000 to go live in them. But seriously, if you were actually planning to send people to Mars in a couple of years, you would need some huge training program and plans to put infrastructure in place on Mars when you got there. None of which is present. Strap yourselves in. We're going to Mars. Not just a few astronauts. Thousands of people are going to colonize Mars. And I am telling you that they're going to do this soon. And the reason is this man is determined to make that happen. His name is Elon Musk. You've got to ask yourself, can this guy really do this by 2025 or 2027? So I think it's a pretty good bet that the person who is revolutionizing the automobile industry in less than 10 years... By promising that they'll have full self-driving next year, a promise they made every year for basically the last 10 years. And the person who created an entire rocket company in less than 10 years, will get us to Mars by 2027. In 2017, when Elon first proposed this huge undertaking, 
His goal was to get the first boots on the ground on Mars by 2022. Since then, Elon has pulled back to a more realistic 2024 deadline to reach the red planet. Wow, all right, so Musk said that SpaceX's long-term goal is to colonize Mars by the 2020s. Hmm. Which sounds impressive. I mean, he must have put a lot of thought into how this plan is going to work out. Then build up the base, starting obviously with one, one ship, then multiple ships, then start building out the city. What a great idea, having the launch and landing facilities right next to the city. That makes we don't do that more often here on Earth. Then making the city bigger. <laughs> Even bigger. <laughs> and Give the man a round of applause. I mean, sure, here on Earth, he needs a five-kilometer exclusion zone to launch tiny rockets by comparison. But on Mars, he is going to put all of the people right next to the only thing that can kill all of them in one go when they're landing and taking off. Now, for the Falcon 9, they did plan to have a rocket that was fully and rapidly reusable. Every part of it was going to be reused. And over the period of the next decade or so, they worked out that actually, even with the rocket they were flying, turns out that they could only ever reuse bits of it. You know, kind of like the space shuttle. You know, the space shuttle where every part of it was reusable apart from the external fuel tank. So with Falcon 9, we've de demonstrated a lot of reuse of the, the, the boost stage and of the fairing. Yeah, it seems like not a lot of their promises of a fully rapidly reusable spacecraft were ever delivered on. And that was after about 10 years of working on it. I wonder what their plans are for Starship. With Starship, we're aiming for full and rapid reusability. So, uh, you know, we obviously had need to accomplish that. That's not uh, <laughs> done yet, but... Um, but, but the success is one of the possible outcomes. Yeah. Not necessarily. There's definitely a very slim chance we'll survive. And he's kind of right. I mean, it's definitely not impossible to build big rockets. After all, those were what took us to the moon some 50 years ago. But what is definitely impossible is that a business plan that involves people giving you their life's savings to live in cramped, difficult conditions for the rest of their lives with the ever-present threat of insta-death isn't going to be a successful business. Mm, just saying. So that's today's video telling you why Elon Musk is not going to colonize Mars. If you enjoyed it, drop a thumbs up on it. Subscribing is always a good option if you want to learn ahead of the curve why these things are going to fail. And as ever, if you really like the work of this channel, you can support it directly through Patreon and uh, thanks for watching.